Hi everyone, my name is Kristen. Welcome to Legacy Homemaking. If you're new here, I am a second year full-time homeschooling mom to four kiddos aged nine, seven, five, and three. And set for we're about to hit all the evens this upcoming year here pretty soon and that's exciting so today I wanted to talk to you about our morning basket what is in our morning basket that we do each morning it's short it's sweet it's simple so come along okay so our morning basket um, is probably not the quote unquote traditional morning basket that you're thinking of. Um, I forget, is it the lady that wrote Mirror Motherhood um, that was such a big morning basket um, enthusiast and she said just to put everything that you could put in there in there and get it all done in morning basket time and that's great. However, that's not really what works for our family, just the way we function and our structure. So this is the um, stuff we use, the things we use and the time in which we do it that works best for us. I like to do it in the morning at breakfast, at the breakfast table. So we will all come in after the kids wake up, get breakfast and set it down. And we will begin, and usually we begin with a hymn. We use um, Happy Hymnody on Instagram. She is a sweet, precious mama who for free um, uploads a hymn with um, practice handwriting sheets and lyrics and music and everybody sings through the, a certain hymn for a month so um, it is just fun to have like a sweet little community there are I'm sure plenty of resources that other people could use you could just pick one if you want I mean the world's wide open but that is what we do normally I try to look for a version on Spotify that I like and so um, I will find that and that will be the version that we listen to each morning and I try to do that kind of when they first get to the table and they're eating so they're kind of listening to this music and I want to show you how we kind of accomplish this at the table with breakfast and milk and cereal and whatever else syrup we might be having how do we keep all this stuff clean so I got this idea, I think it was from Elsie at Farmhouse Schoolhouse on Instagram as well, but um, they're just simple menus. You can buy these restaurant menus on um, Amazon, and I have filled them, not all the way completely, just with what we are using, and that is how we go through each thing. So let me show you what we have in there. I have our Hymn. So this is our hymn from Happy Hymnity. And it's a beautiful printout, usually super pretty. And we just read it off of there while they're working. And so then after we have listened, while they're working, while they're eating, um, after we've listened to our hymn, I will usually by that time have quit making my coffee or gathering up, you know, the last minute items. And I'll be sitting down and we go over our verse. So right now we're working on memorizing Philippians 4, 8. I decided that that would be our verse for our school year this year. And so I'm working on memorizing that. And once I feel like we've got it, got it down pat and it's like hidden in their heart, it's not going anywhere, it's not going anywhere from my heart, we'll move on um, to, a to a different verse. Uh, but we will come back to this one. So I actually just might leave this in here all year long and put the verse or move this back to the end or something like that because this does encompass what I hope and I pray for our school year, that we will learn about whatever's true and honorable and good and just and all of those things. So um, we will sing our hymn, say our verse, and then I'll have them turn it to the next page. Now, this is where we do our catechisms. We are, um, a Baptist family, but we also have decided to start doing catechisms as just a way of deepening and enriching our kids' faith, and quite frankly, my own. Um, it's good to know why we believe what we believe. And so Elsie, once again from Farmhouse Schoolhouse, had this recommendation. It is teaching the shorter catechism um, from Training Hearts and Teaching Minds by Star Mead. It's family devotions, and we 
have really enjoyed this. It was so cheap on Amazon, you guys. Um, it is, it can go a little deeper. They are, um, they, they can be a little long, the question and the answers. So know that, that um, like I said, there are many different resources. This is just one we are using for this year. And I have really, really liked it. So I was just typing out the one question and the one answer and sticking it in there. But these things are kind of a booger to get in and out. And I didn't want to be doing that every week. So I just went ahead and went through and typed out each question. And so right now we're on question five. Is there more than one God? The answer is there is only one, the true and living God. And so I'll find our week in here for question five. Open it up. And they're just super simple, laid out little devotions for each day. So today we, went, we read... Um, well, actually behind the day. So today I read Tuesday, even though it's Wednesday. And it'll give us a little paragraph or a larger one. Over here is a little bit larger of one. And we will go through that. And throughout this paragraph, it'll explain the concept of the question and answer that we are talking about that week. And then give a scripture to back up what they've said. So I really have been enjoying this. I, once again, have a 9753 so of course not everybody's getting everything but it is enriching our breakfast table convert breakfast table conversations we're talking about it and it just gets it just gets these juices flowing and as they get older i'm trusting the lord and just um that that these things will take root in their heart and that they will the ideas will grow deeper as they grow older um but that is what we use for our catechism i have really really liked it um, okay, so those are our September questions. I just went through, counted up how many weeks we had in September, put them on here. And then I found, I tried to find a poem. Now, this I'm going to show you. It's why we have a menu. <laughs> it's not just like stuck. Do you see that jelly? <laughs> that was from this morning. So I just go and find a poem either from a children's treasury or sometimes I just Google September poems and see what comes up and you'll be so surprised at what what is found. So this one is actually named September by Helen Hunt Jackson and we read the poem. We read the same poem every day for a month and by the end of it we've memorized it which is pretty cool. Um, so that I was very very surprised by our first poem we did was Block City by Robert Louis Stevenson and we started August 10th and by the end of August um, my kiddos could, one of them could recite it all the way, I think. Well, maybe all of them, not the three-year-old, but all the older ones got really close, if not were able to do it from memory. And then our last thing is our motto. And I was just searching in my first year of homeschooling for something, um, you know, just a, a, a anchor, a stake in the ground. And I found this on someone's website and I wish I would have wrote it down because I don't remember where it is, but it's basically the Charlotte Mason motto, um, but they put it in this really cute type font and then um, kind of made it just, just condensed it. Um, and so the first one is, I am a child of God, a gift to my parents and my country. I'm a person of great value because God made me. So we did that one for the first month and then every morning. We say that one together, so we say that one together because we've memorized it now. And then we go to this next one that says, I can, and I have them echo after me. So I'll say, I can, and then they say, I can, do all things, do all things, through Christ, through Christ, who strengthens me, who strengthens me. God has made me able, God has made me able to do everything, to do everything required of me. So. It's just a sweet, good little motto and heads us into our um, next thing, which is actually our morning jobs and chores for the day. So that is mainly right now our very basic, very pared down, simple morning basket time. Uh, after when we, as we work our way through this, they are eating, we're talking to one another, we're beginning our day. By the time we get to the end, most people are done eating and we can move in, like I said, to chores and the next thing. 
Um, I would love to add a composer study. So right now I keep all of the stuff we need for morning. Morning basket right here. My little basket. I think it even says morning time. It does. All the menus and all these books. Oh, I forgot about this one. Whoopsies. Hold on. All the menu and all these books. They all fit right in there. Okay. I got this one from um, Rooted in Rest. And I loved it. It, set, it starts, it goes September through June. So we took off, or maybe September through May. So June and July aren't in here, which means we just started this back this past week, which is why I forgot about it. But it says morning exercises for all the year, a day book for teachers. And so you just go through and it has, if anybody significant was born or died on this day, it tells you about it. Um, it gives you poems or important things in history. Today, we were talking about habits, so there's a little habit poem on the ninth. And then we talked about um, the forming of habits, so how are habits formed? When we, when we repeat an act many times, we do it easily without thinking it, and it becomes a habit. And so we talked about good habits and bad habits. Some days, these are longer, some days are shorter, but it's just an easy thing to like kind of Mix it up a little bit, um, but it's it's something different every day, So, which is why it's not in our menus. I just um, put it in here at the very, very end. So I hope that you have enjoyed our simple look. Like I said, I want to one day probably incorporate, this is an artist study by Claude Monet from um, ahumbleplace.com. And I went ahead and, did I say composer study? I hope not, it's an artist study. I went ahead and had them printed and then laminated because I didn't have a laminating machine at the time. Oh, whoops, sorry. <laughs> um, at my local office store because these are very uh, detailed paintings and that would have taken a lot of printer ink. And so we go through this picture study aid. It has everything you need and I am hoping to incorporate that in here pretty soon but this just got us started for the year and it has been great for us um let me put this up i am i have a i don't know if it's a weird personality or what but doing monotonous things over and over and over again can a overwhelm me and b i just don't want to do them um and so it can be like ugh, again or whatever and so I knew Bible time was important I knew poetry time was important I knew memorizing verses and hymn study and all of those things were things that I wanted to be in my homeschool and so before I moved our Bible time to or our morning time to breakfast um, I was saying oh we'll get to that later and starting our day and starting our day and then finding out by two o'clock when the day was over our school day was over with all the core subjects and everything else that we had done and lunch and everything that I was burnt out and I was like I am not I do not want to sit down and read and my kids didn't want to either and so I just found I wasn't doing the stuff I feel most important and that broke my heart so I moved it here and it has worked out fantastic for us so let me know if um, you want a closer look or a flip through of any of the things I've shown here. I would more than happily uh, message that to you on Instagram or if you would like a video on it uh, more in depth, then let me know. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps my channel more than you know. Um, just thank you for everyone who has followed me thus far. And um, I yeah, it's just very appreciated. Appreciated. Okay. I've been talking a lot and I can hear that my kids are done with quiet time. So I'll catch you later. Bye guys.